Good evening, viewers. What a joy again tonight that we have the God-given privilege to come your way with the word of life. And it's my sincere prayers tonight that God's word will do you good in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we shall be concluding a week of spiritual emphasis. And it's my prayers that on this third day of this week of emphasis, that according to the prophecy of Hosea the prophet, in chapter 6, verse number 1 down to 2, there shall be a raising up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for grace that has brought us thus far. From the first day to the second day, even to this last day of prayers and fasting. We pray that as we behold your face again tonight, our countenance shall be changed in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant us deeper understanding of your word. And let the light of the world shine in every dark area of our life. And let there be light in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. We have been looking at the subject of walking in dominion over sicknesses and diseases. And in the course of our teachings, we've been able to establish that behind every affliction of sickness and diseases, there is the wickedness of the devil at work. And as we saw in the case of Job in chapter 2 of the book of Job, verse 7, the Bible says, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with painful balls from the sole of his feet unto his crown, that is, unto his head. Satan is the author, the architect of affliction, of diseases in the life of Job. It was not God. And so it is, wherever you see evil, sicknesses, Satan is behind it. He perpetuates it. It's not the counsel of God. Satan rules in darkness. And the only way to overcome, to subdue him, to dominate him, is for you to walk in the light. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 1. You begin to read verse 4 down verse 5. Paraphrase. It says, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Darkness is the abode of the devil. It is where he operates from. It is where he sponsors his acts from. But when you begin to walk in the light, you subdue his operation. You disannul his operation. His operations can't catch up with you because you are walking in the light. The Bible says when a man walks in the light, he does not stumble. It's only those that walk in the dark that stumbles. So when you begin to walk in the light of God's word, you begin to walk in the path of victory. Praise the Lord. Now, it's the spiritual understanding of this truth that you have, this revelation that you have, that transforms and heals and delivers a man. When you gain access to the truth of the word of God, it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do against your life. It doesn't matter the form or the dimension that the enemy is trying to come against you. When you gain access to the truth of the word of God, which is the light that shines in the darkness, that the darkness cannot comprehend, you walk in dominion. Praise the Lord. Tonight, very briefly, we shall be looking in this concluding path, part C, of walking in dominion over sicknesses and diseases. We'll be looking at one of the manifestations of the spirit of infirmity. Just like you understand from our previous teaching that there is a spirit called the spirit of infirmity 
in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. The word infirmity there means the spirit that makes men inadequate, that incapacitates men. It makes people to function below capacity. That's the spirit of infirmity. It could be the lungs that is functioning below capacity. It could be the kidney. It could be the liver. Any organs of the body. Behind it, there is a spirit that is causing it to happen. And that spirit is the spirit of the devil. It's from the devil. But understand that you can walk in absolute victory over the spirit of infirmity. Now, one of the manifestations of the spirit of infirmity is the spirit of insanity. It makes men to be mad. You see a clear example in Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. You begin to read from verse 2. The popular story of the madman of Gadara. The Bible said he was dwelling in the tombs. He, severally, they tried to help him. But lo, he could not be bound. They bound him with chain, he would break the chain. That gives a picture of a man whose case is helpless, whose case is irredeemable. Day in, day out, he was crying among the tombs. But the Bible made us to understand that the day Jesus came into that coast and he had encounter with Jesus, the demon spirit behind his insanity left him. They rushed out of him. That means insanity is not the end. Whether it's an insanity in the family that is generational, whether it's insanity that comes as an affliction that you are afflicted with by the wickedness of an evil personality, God has the power to break that insanity. I remember the testimony of one of us here in Winners Chapel International, Nairobi. A sister came in with a picture of her mother who had been insane for 30 years. And prayer was made. Prayer was offered. And by, down there in the up country where she was, God supernaturally restored her. Another woman met me one night after the communion service. And she brought the picture of her daughter in the hospital, held down with insanity. Sir, this is the case with my daughter. And I said to her, woman, I don't have enough time with you tonight, but can I see the picture? Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, spirit of insanity, leave. And supernaturally, God restored the mind of the daughter in the hospital. She sat up by herself. Her, mind, her senses came back to her. She was healed and totally delivered. The same God is at work again. That means insanity is not the end. There is hope for you. Now, how do you walk in dominion over sickness and diseases? In this concluding teaching, we'll be looking at two other ways. One, by the endowment of the spirit of faith. By the endowment of the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith is the spirit of power that works in every believer. It is the spirit that dominates the circumstances around you. It is the spirit that refuses to take no for an answer. The spirit of faith speaks in the face of contradiction. He speaks what he believes. He speaks what he wants to see. There is the place for the, of the endowment of that spirit of faith. Now look at what the Bible says in Second Peter. I mean, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter four. I like to read verse number thirteen. It says, "We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe." And therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So there is the spirit of faith. 
He's an overcoming spirit. He's a conquering spirit. He's a victorious spirit. He makes men to overcome in life. And the things you speak boldly, the things you speak unashamedly, the things you speak clearly, they are the things that come to pass evidentially. The spirit of faith will always dominate. It doesn't matter the contradictions around you. When the God order of faith is spontaneously working on you, or working in the, on the inside of you, you are an overcomer any day, any time. Hear what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, and taking unto us the shield of faith, that is the defensive weapon of faith, Faith is not only an offensive weapon, faith is also a defensive weapon. That means the enemy will attempt you. The enemy will challenge you. But when it comes with his attempt, when it comes with his challenge, he says, lift up the shield of faith and tell that situation, my case is different. The enemy will knock at your door. We want to see whether it can come in with high blood pressure, with cancer, with pneumonia, even with coronavirus. But lift up the shield of faith and tell the devil, my case is different. My territory is a no-go area. There is the place of the shield of faith that helps you to be protected, to be secured no matter what the arrows the enemy is throwing at you. Number two, how do you walk in dominion over sicknesses and diseases? Open up to the teachings of anointed ministers of God. Men with healing ministry, open up to their teachings. They are light bearers to their generations. There are men and women that God has given access to certain hidden truth of the word of God. Open up. Don't despise their teachings. Don't ridicule their teachings. Don't make a mockery of their teachings. Open up. God will always reach men through man. Listen to me. Any man you despise, God cannot bless you through him. Open up to the teaching ministries of anointed men of God, men with healing ministry, men with proofs, men that God is practically walking through their hands. Open up. Open up. Open up to them. Now, men in the order of Bishop Oedeko, open up. God has worked diverse miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverances through his life, through his hand. Open up to men like that. Because whatever God has done for one, he can do for all. Listen. Listen. Open up to their teaching ministry. And as you open up to their teaching ministry, I see God taking you up to higher grounds in Jesus' name. Now let me read to you very quickly as I conclude this teaching series. Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33, from verse number 19. This is the description of a man who is sick and afflicted, who is in pain, whose soul is drawing nigh to the grave. He said in verse 19, He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life abhorred bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyer. But verse 23, he says, if there be a messenger with such a man who is in a critical position, who is at the verge of death, he said, if there be a messenger of God with him, 
an interpreter, that is an interpreter of the covenant, one who can explain to him the word of God. He says, one among a thousand. He said, to show unto that dying man the uprightness of God. He said, then God shall be gracious unto the sick man. He said, God shall be gracious unto the sick man and will deliver him from going down to the pit. Why? Because there is a ransom found. So there is the ministry of the interpreter, of the messenger of the covenant. There is the ministry of anointed teachers, light bearers, who are sent to their generation. As you open up to their teaching ministry, the light of God begins to shine on your way. The light of God begins to shine on your path. And as that light shines, you begin to walk in dominion. It is a common thing in this commission today that you hear people repeating testimonies after the order of God's servant, Bishop David Oedepo. She said, he said, according to him, he came back from one of his trips many years ago, and Mama Faith was pregnant. And she walked up to him and said, I have been miscarried. Why? Because she saw blood. She was bleeding. And God said, and said, no, can I have my food, please? And whatever was ordained program from the pit of hell to cause the miscarriage was supernaturally terminated. And we have seen that testimony repeated severally in several places among the winner's family. Why? Because we open up to that teaching ministry. And I believe God, as you receive God's word tonight, allow it to settle in your life, the same order of testimony shall be replicated in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. We can't close this transmission tonight without giving you an opportunity to be born again. In case you are there, you have not given your life to Jesus, would you bow down your heads and let me pray with you. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you tonight just as I am, a sinner. And I ask that you forgive me my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin. Write my name in the book of life. Give me a new beginning. From today, I put my hands in your hand that you be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Praise God. You have just been saved by the confession of your mouth this night. And I see you walking in the reality of it unto the great appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Now, as we partake of the communion, I decree the presence of God to saturate that drink and that bread in the name of Jesus. Turn it into the very blood of Jesus and into his very flesh. And by it, receive your healing, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Until we come your way again, Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.